Recently released in South Africa, this is the Opal Crossland X. Top spec Cosmo model as well over here that we have on test. You can see the lines, it's a crossover SUV and it fits into a very crowded category of cars as well. That there are lots of competitors, but being an Opal, there's lots of loyal fans in the country and you can see why. You've got very nice looking mag wheels over here on the car as standard. Looks really good with a contrasting black roof separate two-tone coloring which looks very good auto folding mirrors on lock and unlock which is a nice feature as well and you can see it's a medium sized small to medium suv the black roof over here and the treatment into the c-pillar reminds me very much of the adam the little baby brother with a two-door it almost looks like an extended adam and you've got of course a nice big spoiler over the rear hatch over here just to give it a nice sporty look to it you open up the boot and you'll see fair sized boot with interestingly again a compartment that's becoming quite popular these days an extra compartment underneath for security purposes etc and what is good to know is that if you take that out you get about 380 liters of boot space you can drop the rear seats as is normal on most hatchbacks up to about a thousand liters of boot space if you do that This version is powered by familiar 1.2 litre three-cylinder turbo engine which is shared with the Peugeot versions as well. Puts out 81 kilowatts, 205 newton meters of torque. So it's got enough grunt, it's no problem at all. Matched to a six-speed automatic gearbox. And it certainly goes pretty well. We've taken on a very nice cruise out in the country and I can tell you it goes nicely. Slightly hard ride, which is something you've got to make your own decisions about whether you like the harder ride or not, but it certainly does go nicely and handle very, very nicely on the open road. Lots of features on the interior, and that's especially because it is the top spec Cosmo version, you do get lots of features, both safety and luxury. Behind the wheel of the Opal Crossland exits, it's a pretty comfortable place. It's nice and relaxed. Your typical small crossover SUV I suppose in that sense nice and easy to drive very very light you've got your full instrumentation you've got that little heads up screen that pops up ahead of you that's very interesting and very useful and just overall the thing about it is it is a little bit of a hard ride but then again Opals were always known for being the sporty car so I suppose a hardish ride goes with the territory when you're driving an Opal what is really fascinating, of course, is the fact that this is on the same platform as the Peugeot 2008. In fact, it even shares the engine with the 2008. And yet, I can tell you, they are so very different, the two cars. The Peugeot, of course, being the typical French ride, soft, comfortable, cushy ride, can I call it? And then you've got the typical German ride, this harder, sportier ride to the Crossland X, which is such a contrast between two cars that under the skin are actually pretty much the same. I find it quite fascinating, personally, that they are so similar, yet so different. And quite honestly, it's going to be a choice you've got to make longer term, whether you want the slightly sportier feel, or whether you want to live with a cushy soft ride. I can't recommend which one you want. That's very much a personal choice. But as you can see, it's really a pleasant light car to drive. We've done 280 odd kilometers so far on this test, and the car is showing an average of 7.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Fair bit of traffic and commuting duty. Nice open road run today as well. I think we'll still get that consumption down a little bit more before we end this test. But I think it gives you a very good idea of what the car is capable of. Overall, pleasant, nice. I think the big thing is Opel's back in a big way in South Africa. I think that's what really is important. And, by the way, it is a semi-finalist in the South African Car of the Year 2018. Finalists being announced in a couple of days. May even be announced before you see this video or by the time you see this video. But it is a semi-finalist right now. So let's see where that goes. Interesting whether it will make the final 10 or not. Cosmo Spec gives you lots of extras and being the top of the range, of course, that's important. So you get items like on startup, a little heads up screen that actually lifts up 
in front of you, the driver, giving you certain information over there. You've, of course, got your center screen that gives you in front on the instrument panel that gives you fuel consumption things like that and then of course you've got the main touch screen in the center of the car which gives you your navigation of course plus a lot of the other settings telephone and various items like that overall giving you all of the extras over there as well and all the information and items like that that you need another feature of this car is that it's got a lot of extra safety spec and just running through certain of the items it's got active braking which is very important and a big warning comes up in on the heads up if you too close to the car in front it does have lane departure warning and blind spot warning in the mirrors which are all features only of the top cosmo spec you then of course go down to the six speed automatic gearbox which if i'm being really really picky i find is not the smoothest gearbox i've ever encountered not unpleasant, but there certainly are some that are a bit smoother. In front of the gear shift are buttons for, of course, your various traction control and switching off the lane departure, etc. Items like that if you want to switch them out. Not always recommended, but they are available. And in the console bin below the air conditioning system, you do get two USB ports as well. Overall, very comfortable very comfortable sporty type seats and with cloth covering nice and neat very nicely trimmed and good space in the back seat as well for the family which i think is most important and it includes isofix child fittings as well for the child seat fittings for the back seats as well this particular model retails at 377,500 rand approximately which does include a three-year 60,000 kilometer service plan as well it's a crowded market segment. There are a lot of competitors, but a lot of people still love Opel and love the Opel name. It's still got a lot of cachet in the South African market. It's a good, solid offering in the, in the segment. And, well, if you're looking for a small to medium crossover SUV, it certainly ticks a lot of the boxes that you would want. So, if you like, and remembering that it's definitely got that little bit of the sporty touch to it in a segment that generally is not very sporty and doesn't offer sporty handling and ride necessarily this one could be one of the options that does check it out for yourself i think it's worth it for motor matters i'm eleanor and i'll see you next time